If we don't get a fair deal from Congress, the government will either shut down on February 15th again, or I will use the powers afforded to me under the laws and the Constitution of the United States to address this emergency. Trump has decided to reopen the government. What we've been seeing a lot lately are lots of concerned conservatives and right-wing supporters criticizing his immediate decision, backing down and surrendering his stance after a five-week-long government shutdown. Ann Coulter, amongst many others, have expressed their thoughts on the matter, going to lengths as to calling him a wimp and a broken man. The pro-Trump media went a little bit hysteric when he agreed to temporarily open the government. In efforts to negotiate with the Democrats, about our immigration system and the border wall. As of the making of this video, no explicit border wall funding has been agreed to in the exchange. I myself am not off the Trump train, and I'd like to shed some new light on this event coming from my own perspective and from Donald Trump's own words. He ran on the motto and promise of intending to enhance border security and build the wall we've been hoping for, and with just over two years into his presidency, I have a feeling it's not over yet. Up until this point, Democrats such as Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer have not negotiated anything regarding border security until the opening of the government, which at this point has been done. Even though many political commentators are referred to this as a cave, this three-week opening of the government allows for federal workers to be paid. The 800,000 federal employees who are directly affected by the shutdown would be receiving their lost wages for their work, and this may actually allow Trump to buy some time in the matter. Setting, in fact, a February 15th deadline until the Democrats are able to come to an agreement. Now, why is this important? Well, for one thing, the president obviously cares about the workers who are affected by the shutdown. But more importantly, this is how negotiations should happen. Remember that the Democrats had stated there were going to be no negotiations unless the government was open. That was the contingency. If either party doesn't budge, it doesn't make for a compelling basis for a national state of emergency which would require approval. Should the Democrats work with Trump to do this, they may reach an agreement, but if not, Trump may actually be in a better state after the deadline to declare a national state of emergency because then he would be in a better position to say, well, the Democrats refuse to cooperate. Now for a different take on the matter, Trump's Art of the Deal, a popular book published in 1987 which gives us some insight as to how he handles and negotiates different deals. Not only has he proclaimed the content of his book during his presidential run, but he has not deviated from this process and his words are still as applicable now as they were then. I took to reading the book recently and found some parallels that may describe the current process that he is fighting and working on. In case most of you didn't know this, Trump's a businessman and believes that deals are what he does best. It is his so-called art form. From building hotels and casinos from New York to Atlantic City, Las Vegas to Dubai, and many other places domestically and internationally, the border wall is no different. At $5.6 billion, I'd say this may be Trump's biggest deal yet. So will he be able to successfully close the deal? In negotiating, Trump has given us some perspective as to how negotiations have worked on his terms and for the best result possible. In his book, something that stood out to me was a passage under protect the downside and the upside will take care of itself. In this case, it would be the terms of the negotiation thus requiring the government to be open with workers receiving their pay. Trump's words were, I always go into the deal anticipating the worst. If you plan for the worst, if you can live with the worst, the good will always take care of itself. Now, I'm not just saying that to be optimistic, but the point here is that you can't be too greedy. The president does not have the power to just bypass the federal government because he feels like it, nor would it be very diplomatic if he decides to stubbornly maintain his position because he is expected to do so. Trump believes in maximizing your options. He goes on to state, I also protect myself by being flexible. I never get too attached to one deal or one approach. Because most deals fall out, no matter how promising they may seem at first. So what does this mean? Take a different road. Deals aren't made when you refuse to cooperate. 
but by deciding to work based on a condition that needs to be met, which in this case is the timeline that has been set for negotiations to happen, and taking a different approach, then you give not only yourself the leverage, but the opportunity for the opposing party to consider all options. And lastly, all I'll say about people who feel disenfranchised by our president's latest move regarding the border wall, remember how he is thinking about this, because he's made it very clear in public for years. With always fighting back, the risk is that you'll make a bad situation worse. If you're fighting for something you believe in, even if it means alienating some people along the way, things usually work out for the best in the end. So Trump has given the Democrats until mid-February to come up with some kind of an agreement before he resumes to his position of a government shutdown due to border security. It's not over yet. Success does leave clues. If there's one thing I can say after closer examination of how our president thinks and works, it's that it's always about advancement. So let's not freak out here, people. We'll know by mid-February what the status is and what we're doing as a country to solve our immigration problem. The border wall is just another deal. And this is how deals are done. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave this video a like and a comment. I'm definitely experimenting with something new here. And consider becoming a Patreon on my Patreon page. Be sure to also hit that bell, even if you are subscribed to my videos, as I know YouTube will not necessarily notify you of a video that I publish. And I hope you all are doing well. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.